Hi, Eddie. Your, your team has a, a very settled look to it. How much of an advantage is that going into this final against a France side uh, having to mix and match a bit? Uh, well, it's no advantage, mate. Um, yeah, they've got a they've got a squad in place. They're playing different members of their squad. Uh, we've decided to to and we've been able to select from the uh, the core of our squad. So it's it's one squad against the other one. No one gets a head start. It's all square when we run out there on Saturday on Sunday. Have you had a chance to look at the French team yet? And if if so, what have you made of it? And look at them. Uh, strong team, mate. Uh, very strong team. Yeah, just got to look back at 2009 when they went on tour to New Zealand. I think the first game of the tour in a three test series. Uh, they didn't have a lot of their senior players available and they won that test and lost the next two. So, you know, we know that the French are capable of, of, of great things. They've got great depth in their, in their rugby uh, top 14 and uh, particularly at the moment they're on a project to win the World Cup in 2023. So this is just part of their project. So what would be your key message going into to the players going into Sunday's final? Well, key message is to is to put every bit of effort into every minute of the game and, and win every battle. You know, the game's going to be a series of battles, whether they be in the air, whether they be on the ground, whether they be in the scrum or in the line out, and we've got to make it sure we commit ourselves to every battle. Okay, thanks, Eddie. Cheers. James Carroll, we'll come to you, please. Thanks. Uh, morning, Eddie. Um, just wondering if you know you do anything differently to prepare for a final because actually it's not that often, you know, with the annual Six Nations games that you actually prepare for a, a final in international rugby. Yeah, we've had a bit of a peaking week this this uh, week. Uh, we've changed the training week to uh, make sure we're at our absolute best on Sunday. Yeah, probably learned a little bit from the World Cup where we felt. In retrospect, we probably underprepared for the World Cup. Um, so we feel like we've got the right balance in terms of physical and, and uh, recovery work this week. And the boys trained outstandingly well at Twickenham yesterday. So we're looking forward to this game on Sunday. And then just a word, if you wouldn't mind, on, you know, you, you'll be playing in front of um, 2,000 fans at Twickenham. So it'd be nice to welcome them back, I presume. Yeah, well, it's such an exciting final for, for rugby. You know, to have fans back. To have the, probably you know the two best sides in Europe playing in the final of an inaugural competition, which has produced some good tough rugby, um, and it's a great opportunity to showcase the game. Julian, we'll come to you next, please. Uh, morning, Eddie. Is the fact you've made just one injury and force change to your starting fifteen a sort of sign of the respect you have for French rugby? Uh, look. It's more, we're always picking our best 23, mate. You know, I've been consistent about that from the word go. Test match rugby is about picking your best 23. Yeah, you know, if you just look at the guys who are coming through on our bench, uh, it's exciting for England rugby that we have the depth coming through and pushing the guys who are starting for us. Um, and, and of course, we respect French rugby. You know, you can never underestimate made a French team. As I said, you know, history shows in that 2009 tour what they're, they're capable of doing. They've set themselves a project of winning the World Cup in 2023. And, you know, historically, we've seen that with their, with their football they did in 98 with, uh, I think, Gerard Hullier was the technical director. Um, and they set a project to win that World Cup. And then in 2018, they set another challenge to win the World Cup. So, we don't underestimate France at all. Thank Mitch, you. Phillips, we'll, Mitch Phillips, we'll come to you next, please. Uh, hi, Eddie. Um, it looks like, again, this is for uh, the most experienced team England have ever put out. Again, um, 813, I think I've made it. Um, after the World Cup, you talked about you know, rebuilding a team and starting afresh. Um, and, and we've moved on to a situation where you've got the most experienced team ever. Um, are, you, are you happy with the kind of long-term uh, progress being as that four years ago you always kind of looked four years ahead? It seems much more organic now. Well, the, the stats don't indicate that, mate. Um, our average age at the World Cup, I think, was 27.7. I think our average age now of our starting 15 is 26.9, uh, to be precise. Um, so we're... 
we are rebuilding the team, but we're doing it in our own way. You know, you guys like to have massive changes. You like to have big headlines, but we're doing it in a systematic and, and, uh, and a progressive way to get our World Cup for the 2023 World Cup team to be in the right age bracket with the right number of caps.